All right, so this is LG's newest display for 2022. And the first time I feel like they've really focused on shrinking down their OLED lineup to actually fit into a desk setup. Now, whether or not they've achieved this is up to discussion. It's redesigned a bit, looks pretty sweet. And I'm sure a lot of us are waiting for LG to finally release this. I have been lucky enough to use this as my primary display since it released. And I had two big questions regarding this display that I feel like I can fully answer now. Now we all understand that these TVs are expensive. These are expensive panels for kind of a little niche of people that are gonna use it as a PC monitor or just a primary gaming display. Number one was, was this TV actually worth picking up over the entire OLED lineup? Like this TV is more expensive than the larger models. While the concept of buying a smaller TV and paying more isn't completely foreign, it is a little strange. If you went out to buy an LG TV right now, you will find another option that is six inches larger and $600 cheaper. Now, I guess what I'm trying to say is my expectations for this panel were really high. I imagined that I was getting a really good screen, maybe paying for more bells and whistles, hopefully a more durable screen against burn-in. Now, over the last years, the 48 inch model was consistently good and priced higher than the 55 inch model because number one, the 48 inch is crazy popular. So there's no huge reason in driving the price down if people are still buying it. And number two was the 48 inch model is made as a byproduct from leftover glass from the 77 inch models. So the production yields were probably less efficient. And now that the smaller displays cater towards a specific buyer that's going to use it, let's say as a PC monitor or a dedicated gaming display, it made sense for LG to start focusing on this. So when I first unboxed the 42 inch, I noticed how much significantly lighter and compact they had made the display. There's no longer the big protruding aluminum stand that would prevent you from pushing it back on a desk and it's now using these l-shaped plastic legs which lift the display off the desk and leave you with a bit of breathing room under now you can route cables under the tv keep your playing cards sunglasses or whatever you want to use the space for it's up to you so i've seen a lot of tvs in my life and it's still such a fascinating reality to see panels get this thin and since OLED is self-lit, having no backlight allows this display to be super thin. Add some sleek bezels and you have yourself a pretty nice looking TV. Now the big question overhanging still is, does the display look good? Does it perform well? Also remember we did shrink from 48 inches to 42 inches. So 4K's pixel density is higher on this display. It's not gonna beat out 27 inch or 32 inch 4K monitors, but text does look a tad crispier and you can now have the display closer to you without impacting the quality necessarily. Not that you want this screen so close to you because it still is very large to have as a monitor. So it's still not the most ergonomic screen in the world. There's no height adjustment, tilt. You do have mounting support if you wanna put this on a wall or an arm but it's still fairly limited compared to actual monitors. It does shed about a whole 10 pounds off its weight compared to the larger model, which should make the process a bit easier. So I imagine the summary of the 42 inch design overall is that it's a bit more desk friendly. Anyways, I'm sure you wanna hear about the performance, which is a bit of a controversial topic with LG overall, and they don't really look good. So LG is marketing this display as an OLED EVO. So you'd assume it does have the newer WBE panel, but it actually still has the older WBC panel. Even though LG still says its performance should be basically identical, they also said that the 42 inch C2 should start shipping in Q2 of 2022 with the newer panel. However, I repurchased this model last week again, and it is still using the older WBC panel. Now, WBE and WBC sounds like a lot of mumbo jumbo. However, one panel is the next generation panel that's supposed to get higher brightness, better colors, increased panel durability. But right now, the panels only seem to be coming to the 48 inch model or above, and still not on the 42. So it's kind of weird that LG is doing a panel lottery and not really telling people clearly. So you gotta have to live with that if you want the 42 inch model. Other than that situation, I have to say that in person, it performs really well. Still at the top of high end, if not one of the best gaming displays on the planet right now. Since it's been shrunk down, it does feel way more comfortable on desktop usage. You don't feel like you have this behemoth of a display on your desktop, or you don't feel like your desk is going to literally crack on itself because the weight is so much. Now, this panel is also still ridiculously good for movie watching, TV shows, and general content. With OLED, you get your deep blacks, awesome colors, and gaming is obviously really good. You get the whole breakfast of features, variable refresh rate support, G-Sync, FreeSync, Dolby Vision, the full 48 gigabytes per second bandwidth with HDMI 2.1, and 4K 120 really does feel like next generation gameplay on the consoles, and this display really lets you squeeze the power out. Input lag is also still best in class where the responsiveness of your mouse movement to whatever you see on screen 
is very, very snappy. No issues whatsoever playing shooters on this. Now you still do run into a lot of the hiccups that you ran into in the past with OLEDs as a monitor. Obviously it's a TV. It's not really designed to be a monitor even though LG is making them smaller. So you would assume they want people to use them as monitors. But yeah, it's a little strange. The scaling can get a little weird. Obviously, since it's smaller, it is better than last year. Protection features like auto dimming are still pretty annoying. So if you find yourself doing static tasks, the screen will auto dim itself to protect the panel from burning. There's also a bit of color shifting towards the edges of the display on a white background at some viewing angles with a bluish green tint. So if you've been a fan of LG's OLED lineup, this is pretty much going to keep you happy. Now there is another weird quirk that I did find with this TV. While WebOS 6 feels faster and snappier than the older models because it does have a new A9 Gen 5 chip, the menu options feel like they take longer than last year to load. So if you can get past some of the downsides of OLED, whether you're using it as a monitor or using it as a general gaming display, it can be quite an experience if you hook up a console or a powerful computer and launch up a title in 4K. It would be tough to find a setup that beats this overall, where inputs feel super smooth, contrast and colors are killer, and the package is impressive. I also dove in a bit more into some other videos as using OLEDs as an actual productivity monitor using the 48 inch. It's a little weird, but you can get past it if you really want to. But yeah, for a package that covers media consumption, gaming, and even if you wanna use it as a monitor, even though it's still not perfect yet, it's pretty awesome display. I just think it's not worth it right now though. Seriously speaking, the 42 inch model costs more money than the 48 inch from last year. And I feel like unless you've got a hole burning in your wallet, you should probably pick up the 48 inch. It's about 800 bucks at Best Buy and Amazon. And I feel like you're gonna get basically all the features and you're not even really getting a next generation panel on the 42 inch. So I'd say skip this for right now, maybe wait till fall if you really want the 42 inch size, cause then you'll see the price drop start to happen. So overall, it's been my entire overview of this guy. Hope you guys enjoyed, catch you guys in the next one.